Just a second, and send. Hey everybody, it's me, Jacob. Sorry about that. I had to post about my favorite team. They're playing tonight, and they're gonna crush the competition. Crushed it. That's what my team's gonna do to your team. Oh yeah! Huh, excuse me, just a second. What? Somebody commented on my post. Your loser team is gonna eat dirt tonight. Oh, I'll show them. I've got perfect comeback. Oh yeah? Well your head is filled with dirt. Boom. And post. Jacob, what are you doing? I don't know, Jacob. Maybe we should do this. But Jacob, why ever not? Because this week we're talking about peace. Peace is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. Oh. But I don't want to make peace. I want to get even. There's only one thing that'll help me calm down and make the right choice. A can of chips. Whew. 
Sometimes, when you want to fight with someone, it's good to focus your mind on something else. So I'm going to focus on building a curvy chip bridge, which requires so much focus, I'll have no room to think about all the insults I could make online. In today's story, we're gonna see what a guy named Isaac did when he was insulted. I wonder if they made fun of his favorite sports team. No. Guess I'm gonna need to focus a little bit more. I'd better start over. See you on the other side. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Genesis, chapter 26. God had chosen Abraham to follow him, and God made the same promises to Abraham's son, Isaac. I will make your children after you, as many as the stars in the sky, and I will give them all these lands. All nations on earth will be blessed because of your children. Thank you, God. The land of the Philistines where Isaac lived had experienced a period of famine, but God blessed Isaac's crops. Hey, boss, we done gathered 100 times more wheat than we planted. Excellent. 103.7 times as much to be precise. And your flocks and herds are multiplying like rabbits. Actually, they're increasing like sheep and goats, because that's what they are. Very well, carry on. Unfortunately, the Philistines who lived nearby grew jealous of Isaac's success. They shoveled dirt into his wells, cutting off his water source. Excuse me? The king of the Philistines called for Isaac and issued a command. You have become too powerful. Move away from us. It wasn't fair. Isaac had plenty of men who could stand against the Philistines and fight, but he chose to keep his coup. All right, we'll move down to the Valley of Gerar. Isaac and his family packed up everything he owned. I knew I should have been saving all those Camel X delivery boxes. They moved on and made camp in the Valley of Gerar, where Abraham had lived many years before. Oh, all right, men. Let's open up those old wells my father dug. Isaac's servants immediately got to work, digging for water. Wee! It's hotter than a snake in a hog's back out here. My calculations of soil composition. We should hit water in precisely 2.6 seconds. Well, ain't that the bee's knees? Abraham's old wells filled with cool, clear water once again. The happy herds and flocks could drink their fill. <laughs> That is, until the nearby Philistine herdsmen showed up. So kind of you to open up these wells for us. Step aside, the water's ours. Isaac's servants gaped at the Philistines. You got some noise. These wells belong to Isaac by ancestral tradition and dint of hard labor. Whatever. We're taking the well. Oh yeah? We're gonna have to fight me for it. I believe the appropriate course of action is to flee. As Isaac's servants and the Philistine herdsmen faced off, Isaac himself arrived. Easy does it, fellas. There's plenty of land in this valley for everyone. We'll move along. But, uh, but, but we can take them. Let's go. So Isaac and his family and his servants and his flocks all moved camp down the valley. And once again, his servants set out to dig new wells. This is an exercise in futility. Yeah, well, I've been working out. My futility is really strong. <laughs> Look here! The new wells also produced clean, clear, cool water, but it wasn't long before Philistine herdsmen arrived on the scene. Yes! Another day, another well for us. Why, you, you, I'll flatten you back to the flood. Step aside. Eek, save me. Once again, Isaac showed up. 
Take it down a notch, please. There's still room for everyone. Oh, come on. We could knock them flat. Yes, we could, but we're not going to. Move on out, boys. For a third time, Isaac and his men moved camp, and once again, his servants dug new wells. This time, I'm gonna tie those bullies in knots and dip them in garlic. Oh, look, water, yay. Wait for it, wait for it, hmm. This time, no one challenged Isaac or his servants. They were left to tend to their flocks and herds in peace. That is, until one day, Isaac spotted King Abimelech heading his way with a host of advisors. When the royal entourage arrived, Isaac welcomed them. Why have you come to me? You were angry with me and sent me away. Abimelech shifted and exchanged a glance with his advisors. Well, we saw clearly the Lord was with you, so we want to make a peace treaty with you. <laughs> We always treated you well. We sent you away peacefully, and uh, now the Lord has blessed you. <laughs> Give us your word you won't harm us. I can do that. Isaac prepared a feast for the Philistines. Early the next morning, the men made an agreement to keep peace with each other. Then the Philistines went on their way. Need a drink? Pretty good well right there by the road. Yep, even though Isaac had the power to win a fight, he had chosen to stay strong and walk away three times in a row, and God had blessed him with peace. The Philistines insulted Isaac when they sailed right in and took over his wells, causing him to move three different times. Truth is, Isaac had a right to be angry, and he knew he was strong enough to crush the Philistines. But Isaac also knew that he could make peace simply by digging another well. And in the end, the Philistines made a peace treaty with Isaac. Being strong doesn't mean you have to fight. And making peace doesn't make you weak. Think of Jesus. He was stronger than any of us, but he allowed himself to be arrested and put to death on a cross so he could make peace with all of us once and for all. You're not weak when you make peace. When you choose to hold your temper and stay calm instead of losing it, you show others how strong you really are. So here's the one thing to remember today. You can show you care about others by walking away from a fight. Don't get me wrong. There are definitely times to stand up for yourself and to stand up for other people. A grown up you trust can help you know when. But sometimes the best way to build a bridge to someone else is to walk away. Look at this. Ta-da! Isn't it a thing of beauty? See, building this helped me just calm down a bit. I don't even care about getting revenge. I just want to enjoy the game. Go team, go! Walk away, win! Yeah! Woo? No, that doesn't feel right. That's for off the field. See you next time.